Hello and thank you for joining us today. I'm Michelle Marks, Chancellor of the University of Colorado Denver, and I have been waiting to start a conversation series for a long time and to get out and to meet with leaders and change makers across our local and our national communities. There are so many incredible things happening in Colorado and our nation and the world. And at CU Denver, we are always asking the big questions and we are seeking big, bold solutions. Uh, but it does take strong connections with people, with organizations, with industries outside our university to make a real impact. And what better way to kick off this series and highlight that impact than a discussion about innovation and smart cities and Denver's future. I'm here today with Tyler Swedock, who is the executive director of the Colorado Smart Cities Alliance. And Tyler has built his career solving problems at the intersection of technology and urbanism. His previous roles include work with the city and county of Denver, the Colorado Department of Transportation, and the American Lung Association here in Colorado. And now Tyler leads the Alliance, which is the first and only statewide coalition of public, private, academic, and research organizations that are committed to advancing smart city initiatives. Tyler, thank you so much for being here with us today. Absolutely, I'm so excited to be one of the first in, in your new interview series. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, I, I think the work that the Alliance does is absolutely fascinating, but some people might not know what a smart city is. So tell us, what is a smart city? Sure, I mean, I, I don't know that most people really know what a smart city is, but um, they interact with them every day, right? A smart city is really about using emerging technology for good. Artificial intelligence and other sorts of new emerging trends are shaping the world as we know it. And the physical infrastructure that cities have built for a very long time is now becoming digital. And so the smart city space, smart cities initiatives are really about how cities or counties, any type of government is using the best tools that usually involve technology and data to make a change, usually a positive change um, in the lives of people's transportation, or air quality, or some other issue that governments um, want to solve. You talked about a couple of these initiatives. Can you can you share with us what a couple of initiatives are and some that have been really successful in cities? Sure. I mean, there are so many. I mean, there are hundreds of smart cities initiatives just here in Colorado that we that we know of or get to facilitate. Um, but some of the the most um, promising ones have to do about with transportation, right? Think about uh, streetlights, traffic lights. For a very long time, they've been, for lack of a better word, dumb. Um, they just work on a set timing plan, no matter what traffic is like, no matter what the time of day is. New technology can allow traffic to be sensed in real time and to change those lights red and green based on uh, you know, what the optimum timing of the traffic system is like. That's one example that a lot of jurisdictions are using today, modernizing their transportation system so that you get more green lights as you go from A to B. That's very cool. Some partnerships aren't necessarily physical or geographical, but we happen to be sitting here today mm -hmm. in the CU Denver building on our campus, and there is a physical co-location of the Smart City Alliance with CU Denver. Talk about that. Why is that important? How is that advantageous? Well, for a lot of reasons. One, I mean, we have people and they need a place to work, right? And, and so we're very thankful to be right downtown here at 14th and Larimer. Um, but our work relies on working with external partners, right? And so our organization consists of about 80 different other organizations, lots of governments, cities and counties, lots of businesses that are building the technology solutions for governments to use. And you know, our job is to bring those partners here to the university and find ways to collaborate and build something new together. There's 3D printers here, there's, there's stuff here to build things. So we wanna take ideas, we wanna build them into a product or a service that we can then test in the real world. And all of those different partners form this ecosystem that we as the Alliance represent and we bring them here so that we can find new types of solutions to the challenges that everyone faces every day. So 55% of the world's population live in cities, in urban areas today, and that number is projected to go to 70% by 2050. Mm -hmm. How do you see partnerships like this one accelerating innovation? In a lot of ways, um, but first I wanna highlight the first part of your question, right, about you know, growth in cities. 
when you think about the issues that are facing cities or you know suburbs or it doesn't have to be a city, um, they are immense, right? We're talking about um, air pollution that is prematurely killing people and giving people asthma, um, transportation systems that are very dysfunctional. Um, and all of those systems aren't going to get better if more and more people are moving here without new ways and new tools for cities to approach each of those issues. And universities are where ideas are generated, right? And um, also where ideas are measured and evaluated and researched. So, for example, when um, scooters started hitting city streets, you know, five years ago, you know, are those scooters actually being used in a way that can improve mobility in the city or not? Well, it turns out the university has a lot to say, right? And researchers can dig into that question in a way that a city who doesn't have a research department can do. And so understanding the impact of these new trends of whether Uber and Lyft is having a positive or a negative impact on a transportation system, that is one really enormous way universities can play a role is informing what solutions are solutions and which ones might actually be taking us in the wrong direction. Another way is you know companies are actually created here at the university. One of the companies we work with um, w was with a researcher and uh, he formed a company uh, focused on reducing the emissions of commuters, right? That's a big component of climate change is people driving individual cars, burning gasoline to and from work. And so he said, well, what if we developed a system that uses artificial intelligence to tell people what their other options are based on where they're going? Um, do they have a scooter? Can they take transit? Um, what are all the, the multimodal options available to them? And what's the environmental impact of those? And so we partnered that company with the city and county of Denver, and they're now using that platform, trying to incentivize employees to make different behavior choices about how they get to and from work. If you could snap your fingers and magically create one innovation to make Denver a smarter city today, what would that be? I'm a transportation guy, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to transportation. Um, if we could have a zero emission smart transportation system, that would solve so many other issues around affordable housing, um, around uh, uh, equity, because so many of the equity issues facing our city have to do with inequitable access to transportation, getting kids to the best schools, um, you know, getting to your job. And so it's not necessarily just one solution, but if you combine something like smart traffic signals with zero emission vehicles, so we had charging infrastructure throughout the city, um, and something like automated vehicles that can, for a very low cost, get people to and from the transit system, I would love to see a smart, connected, electric transportation system built out here in Denver, and it would solve so many other issues other than just transportation. Well, since we can't just snap our fingers and make solutions happen, what yeah. is the real work that you would like to see happen to get us on a path to moving towards becoming a smarter city? I mean, what do we need to do? Well, we need to take that system and, and pick it apart one piece at a time, right? You know, uh, what's the saying? You can't eat an elephant all at once. You got to take it one bite at a time, something like that. Um, and so that's what we're doing, right? We're taking specific problems, like how do we get goods um, to and from places in a more efficient way? Or um, how do we get people the first and last mile of their destination if they get on a light rail station? Can we get them to their final destination quickly? Um, and there are all sorts of new tools and solutions for trying to tackle one aspect of that problem, but it's an iterative process, right? And the system, in order for it to be improved, needs to be improved one piece at a time, and that's what we're hoping that we can tackle together with the university and our other partners here. One of the challenges that we experienced when we had to pivot education to be almost entirely online is that many of our students didn't have access to broadband or to strong connectivity to take to receive education yeah. in that way and what I'm one thing I'm excited about is that the university just secured a 2.5 million dollar grant from the US Economic Development Administration yeah. uh, to support 5G networks tell us about what that's up what opportunities we have and what that's going to do for our university and the city Absolutely. Um, and you know, to your question earlier, I almost want to change my answer and say universal connectivity would be the one smart city solution I would love to see. Um, but in this case, 
you know, connectivity is evolving, right? Today we have, you know, broadband, um, and um, a lot of that happens through fiber, right? Um, uh, strands of glass that are in the ground that provide reliable physical connection and really fast speeds. But tomorrow's technology that's, that's beginning today is, is 5G, right? The fifth generation of cellular networks. Um, and even though, you know, you might see on your phone uh, a 5G symbol when you're walking around, um, for the most part, most people don't have access to the best 5G network and the highest speeds that it's going to provide when the infrastructure is fully built out. Um, and when it is built out, you're gonna have incredibly fast speeds. You're gonna have the ability to have lots and lots of devices in the same space. So if you've ever like been to a football game and you're like trying to get internet and there's just no connectivity, it's because the, the spectrum doesn't allow for it. So we wanna build the state of the art 5G network here on campus. And we wanna use it in order to generate businesses and ideas um, with you know people that have been left behind by yesterday's connectivity and yesterday's infrastructure, you know the BIPOC community, women, um, people with disabilities, and we want to allow them to generate solutions that can solve some of these problems by using the network we have and accessing some programming that we're going to start as well. And so, very excited. Um, we're going to use this space as a living lab to generate the future of tomorrow's cities. I love the theme that has come out in a lot of your responses around smart cities are accessible cities. Smart cities are equitable cities. H how would you define, uh, what, what adjectives would you use to define what a smart city is or what a smart city could be sure. in America today? So I have my own definition. I think part of being a smart city is that every city kind of has to define those priority issues for themselves. But in my opinion, um, a smart city is equitable it's resilient um, and it's sustainable, right? And, and if you're not tackling those three issues with the technologies of tomorrow, then I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of how the technologies of yesterday left behind so many people. I love that. And if there are people that are watching this and listening to this conversation today and- I hope there are. And, and I hope there are too. <laughs> and and if, if, if there are people that are getting excited about the concept of smart cities and they wanna do more learning, around how to become a part of creating smart cities, how would they do that? Yeah, well, um, th there is now a smart cities certificate, um, as it, right now as a graduate uh, uh, curriculum, um, and, and that you can enroll in it and learn more that, that was created here. Um, I got to contribute to some of it and, and some of our board members are, are on it. Um, but with this grant, we're also gonna create an undergraduate program that's gonna be accessible to any students, whether they're CU Denver students or not, can come and enroll and learn more about what's happening in this space. Maybe they're a working professional and they want to you know, get that promotion, or maybe they're just interested in how they can help solve a social good. Um, there'll be classes and stackable credentials that students can take in order to, to get certifications on smart cities here at CU Denver. That's amazing, and I hope many more people do. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. I really appreciate it, and thank you for everything that you and the Smart Cities Alliance are doing in partnership with CU Denver. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I look forward to our partnership together.